my talk at the IntelliJ IDEA conference, I get access at last to Gemini 1.5 and it's dicey. More fun with AIs who can't do basic math. Pi AI and perplexity AI and a few random thoughts. Welcome to Tales from the Jar Side. Welcome, my name is Ken Cousin, and this is my free weekly newsletter, Tales from the Jar Side, where we talk not just about technology, but, but about why things happen and what's worth spending your time and energy on. This is for the week of March 3rd through March 10th. The newsletter comes out on Sunday. Today is Monday, March 11th. This week I taught a spring and spring boot course on the O'Reilly Learning Platform. That was actually week one of my spring and three weeks course. And I had my regular Trinity College course on large scale and open source development. Regular readers of and listeners to, and of course, video viewers of this newsletter are affectionately known as jarheads and are far more intelligent, sophisticated, and attra attractive than the average newsletter reader, reviewer, or listener. If, if you wish to become a jarhead, please subscribe using the supplied button. This time, maybe I'll remember not to bypass the subtitle. The subtitle this week is, I like quiet tennis. It's like regular tennis but without the racket. I'm shot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Really bad. Bad one there. Our first section this week is talking about the presentation I did at IntelliJ IDEA Conference 2024. This is a conference run by JetBrains, the company behind a whole wide range of developer tools and IDEs. The one that I use the most is IntelliJ IDEA. I've had a subscription for oh my goodness, probably better than 10 years now, or at least as long as they've had it as a subscription. And I really do enjoy it. I use it all the time. I use a couple of major plugins. I use the AI Assistant. I use GitHub Copilot. Um, and then a bunch that come built in, like Presentation Assistant and stuff like that. This conference was invited. It was a bunch of uh, speakers over two days were invited to give talks on various technology topics. My topic was on... Java testing or testing Java applications with JUnit, Makito, and Assert J. And I talk about those things all the time. I was trying to focus it on the IDE, and but the problem is I don't really use the plugins that often. I do use the IDE, but I don't have specific plugins that I like for those various things. I just use the built-in functionality. Once I gave up on trying to find extra plugins and just show what I do, then it became a lot more fun and I relaxed and figured I'll just explain what you can do, some of the interesting features of JUnit, some of the interesting features of Makito and so on, and that worked out much better. The other nice thing that happened is it turned out that the, the company was using StreamYard as their broadcast medium for that, for the screencast, and I have a StreamYard account. And the nice thing about StreamYard is that you can hit a button and screencast the same thing on your channel that you're currently doing with someone else. So I asked them if they didn't mind it if I did that. And they said, no, go ahead, even though they're eventually going to split theirs up into individual segments. So I did that. And so with no warning, suddenly the Tales from the Jar Side channel had a live stream. As you see here, I renamed the video to be Expert Java Testing Strategies Revealed. I'm like, oh my God, that's clickbaity. But my, I think it was a vidIQ plugin on on the on my Android on my studio program said, "Hey, this would be a better title." So I went fine, and this is the embedded video. I eventually cut it down a little bit. It's a little over an hour, but it's got everything in it in case you're interested. So that's uh, on the YouTube channel. It's gotten a fair number of views. I think it's doing okay, and I'll probably make a longer term presentation out of it. So I hope you like it. Thanks. This next section was that I got based on the idea that I got an email last week saying, hey, we're giving you access to Gemini 1.5 Pro, but only through the Google AI Studio interface. And I'm like, oh, OK, I don't really want to use Google AI Studio, but what the heck? And I went and there's a button there to like upload a bunch of files and it's got a context window of a million characters or a million tokens, really, which is a for those who are not aware, a million tokens is probably about 750,000 actual words, which is 
pretty substantial. I mean, that's a lot of, lot of stuff. So I was going to upload a whole directory of information and I kind of overwhelmed it and went, yeah, all right, let's try something else. So I just uploaded my book and tried to ask questions about it. it seemed to do okay. I put in a PDF copy of Makito Made Clear, which only used up 36,000 tokens anyway. It's not a long book. It's only about 70 pages long. But then I was trying to type in questions and the user interface kept getting in the way. As I mentioned here, I was actually just trying to type and suddenly it started typing backwards. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's a sentence. The first message in this conversation contains that file or what I was trying to say with a little typo in there. But I mean, who could even read that? And I couldn't get out of it. And when I tried clicking on it again, then it just, uh, it said, why are you typing backwards? You know, that's kind of the response. It was able to interpret it, but it, it, it couldn't think beyond that. And I was like, yeah, all right. So at any rate, I, I play with it a little bit and it, it kept being kind of bulky and I think we're still very much in the beta stage here. What I'm looking forward to is when Gemini 1.5 Pro or even better 1.5 Ultra becomes available through the REST API and that hasn't happened yet. So I'm looking forward to it, but we'll see when that, when that finally shows up. Now, th this section is about AI models trying to do very simple math. I got into that a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, when I was working on the Langchain for J stuff, where you can put in the integrated tool support, and I really like that. But to look at the sample problem they gave that motivated why you'd want that, they tried to have it uh, find the square root of the sum of the lengths of words in a given string or just hello and world. And I couldn't believe how badly it <laughs> did that on many of these models. So I decided to follow up on that a little bit and try out a wide range of these smaller but local models, ones I could run on my local machine using the Olama system. So here's an example, and I just basically say, well, I'll show you. This one uses the local language model known as Wizard Math, believe it or not. It sounds clever. But Wizard Math is trained specifically to handle math questions. I'm using the 7 billion parameter model, which falls into the relatively small category. 13, 14 billion, that would be a medium category. 50 or 60 billion parameters, that would be large. And then they get much bigger from there. So here you see I'm running the wizard math model through a llama. And I said, what's the sum of the number of letters of each word in the sentence, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog? And it replied, let's think step by step. And it, it tried to extract the words and it extract the words just fine. Split the sentence individual words. And then it tried to say what the number of letters in each word was. And you could see it's off right at the beginning. It said the had four letters. Quick it got right, brown it got right, fox is off. That should have three, and it said four. Jump is off. That should be six. Over is right. The, see the word the came in twice, got them both wrong. <laughs> Lazy's off. Dog is off. Adds them all up and can't even add that because that's not actually the sum of the numbers that they just said. So this is typical. I, I was very surprised at its inability even to get the length of strings, but I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised. So, so be it. I tried it here uh, with Code Llama. Code Llama got all the word lengths right except for the word the, which again, it got wrong both times. So it thought THE had one letter and then it thought it had two the second time it occurred and the rest are right and it added them up and got the right answer on the sum, except that's not the sum of the letters that they provided. <laughs> so again, so hey, good for you. I don't know. Uh, now, I got to mention that if you use the commercial tools like Claude 3, any of those latest models, or GPT, even 3.5 or GPT 4, those get the right answer. Now, Gemini, once again, I tried it with 1.0 Pro via the RESTful web service, and it got all the links right and then added them wrong for some reason. 1.5, I did do that example, and that worked fine. But when it got it wrong, I just told it. Hey, I think you added wrong. Try again. And it went, oh, you're absolutely right. And it listed them all again. And this time it got it right. I thought it was wrong until I realized that I put in a jumped instead of jumps. 
for the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and therefore that's 36 so it's good okay so i'm still planning to make a video about this it just feels a little thin but might be interesting to some people anyway to see this and to understand what llms are good at and what they're just not so good at this next section was on another AI model called Pi. I, I put it in as capitals here. It really should be capital P, lowercase i, really. And it's at pi.ai for what it's worth. And this is a different one. The, the, the point with Pi is it's trying to be your friend. Now, I'm a little suspicious of things like that. I, I don't respond well to overly saccharine friendliness. It, it's a little much for me. But it does seem to be harmless, and it is at the moment completely free, so that's good. So if you go to pi.ai, you're greeted with a message like this. Hey there, great to meet you. It's like, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm sorry, it's just me. I'm Pi, your personal AI. My goal is to be useful, friendly, and fun. Ask me for advice, for answers, or let's talk about whatever's on your mind. How's your day going? And I'm like, no, no, I don't. But I did try to use it and one of the things it does have on the home page if i actually go there is that they have a daily podcast they call it daily news briefing and it's obviously read by one of their voices and i don't know again you know given the difficulty people are having with news items and everything in ai already i'm not sure i want to support something like that but it's short it's five minutes long it's a pretty decent summary it's not bias to any particular direction, they're trying to appeal to everybody, you might be interested. The danger with Pi is that, as I mentioned here, it's the sort of model that tech people talk about when they suggest that AI models can replace psychologists or other experts. That's a trap that a lot of these tech bros fall into. Is they way underestimate everybody else's job. They think it can all be automated by what they do because what they do is hard and what everybody else does must be easy. And it's like you just want to roll your eyes at some of those people. But, you know, I mean, just look at self-driving cars. It's like, yeah, good luck with that. This is not as easy as you think it is. On the other hand, it is a friendly model. And if you're lonely, you know, it's probably not somebody terrible to chat with. I just don't expect too much. I did ask it to sum the number of letters in that target string, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and it got the answer right the first time. So there's that. And then, of course, I said, what do you think of the book, Help Your Boss Help You, which I even spelled wrong, look at that, by, by me. And it went, oh, it sounds like a fantastic read. Yeah, the reviews are overwhelmingly positive. Now, I don't know where it got those reviews. Uh, with many readers praising the view, the book for its practical advice on navigating the sometimes tricky relationship between managers and employees. I love the concept of constructive loyalty that Cousin introduces. Wow, that's actually good because I do spend a lot of time on that, which emphasizes the importance of building trust and finding common ground in the workplace. It's a refreshing perspective. I can't even read it out loud without getting into this mood uh, that could benefit both managers and employees alike. Have you read the book yourself? I have, actually. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Yes, I'm sure you would. Let's move on. But, you know, they were so positive about it, I had to bring it into the newsletter. I have to recommend it. I did put the, the discount code in for anybody who decides they want to buy it. Okay, so that that's Pi AI. If you wind up using it, let me know what you think. There's another AI model that has not really broken through in the popular media yet, but a lot of people who use these things are well aware of it. A lot of people are using perplexity here, which is that again, perplexity.ai. And a lot of people are using this as a Google replacement, more or less, because you could ask anything you want and you get not just a summary, but links to various articles. Let me log in and then I'll try asking it something. Okay, so I've logged in. I'm not on the pro version. I'm not paying for this. But let's see, I clicked in the Ask Anything button, and here's a bunch of suggestions. Uh, space Junk Returns to Earth. Let's take a look. And you see what it does? It gives you the sources of various articles, some images is found. Here it gave me a definition. There is a summary of what's going on. Uncontrolled space junk hit Earth over the Pacific on March 8th of 2024. Uh, it was a discarded pallet from a Japanese supply ship that arrived at the ISS in 2020. Okay, on and on, and there's related stuff. And you can see how this is not a bad Google replacement. 
what I like about it when I use it is when I'm going to ask it about categories and I want a summary of the overall area, you know, like I wouldn't ask it like the open, what hours is a store nearby open or something like that. I'd ask it more of these general questions and see if it could give me uh, a decent answer plus several direct links. This is something that Google used to be the thing to do, but Google is so cluttered by now with ads and and SEO type stuff, you know, search er, uh, search and search engine optimization stuff that you get really tired of it and it's just the quality's gone way way down so this one actually seems kind of cool if you do wind up using it please let me know i'd be interested in hearing about it in this section i decided to go with some random jottings it didn't really fit anywhere else i just thought okay i'm gonna add them here so the first one is about movies that are rewatchable that I watch all the time just because I like them. And it, it strikes me that there are a lot of movies that I rewatch that aren't really very good movies. They just have some really good parts in them. And that seems to be what makes a really good rewatchable movie is if it's got some great stuff and a lot of garbage or things you don't care about all mixed in, because then you could skip the parts you don't care about or ignore that while it's on the background and then just focus in on the good stuff. And I used to hear as my classic example of that Caddyshack. I mean, Caddyshack is not really a very good movie when you think about it, but it's got phenomenal scenes and the performances by, like I say, Ted Knight is brilliant in this movie. Bill Murray is good in every scene he's in. Rodney Dangerfield, it's the definitive Rodney movie. Uh, and Chevy Chase is not bad. You know, he's good and he's not too annoying, which is really good. But, I mean, it's not supposed to be about them, right? It's supposed to be about the caddies. This is a shack for the caddies. And the caddies are all kids. And they are they range between completely forgettable to kind of annoying. Uh, I don't get that love interest at all. Whereas the guys are all right. I mean, again, nothing that really jumps out at me. But it's okay. Uh, but the But the good stuff is so good. I mean, it's one of the most quotable movies of all time, you know. Big hitter, the llama, you know as well as so many Rodney lines. Anyway, I just want to mention that. This one, as I said, I was talking to my wife, and she decided she was okay with being beautiful and terrible as the dawn, treacherous as the sea, stronger than the foundations of the earth. I can't manipulate my voice like, like Galadriel, but you get the idea. I said, what's the downside? She said, all shall love me in despair. Yeah, no problem. I can live with that. As for diminishing and going into the West, she said, nah, no thanks. I'm good. Okay, so silly, but I didn't know where else to put it. This one was a couple of gags. I said, during my online talk, I got a chance to use my only stateless services joke. Uh, a stateless service is a program you access that doesn't retain any information between the calls. You, you send it information that it needs and then it responds. So it can kind of go to sleep in between the calls. The gag is I say, you know, I think all services should be stateless. And then you say, really, why do you think that? And I go, why do I think what? Yeah, room shot. The other gag is one that I I need to I need a, somebody else to tell it with. It's an old comment of the problem with the world is that idiots are so sure of themselves, while smart people are so full of doubts. At which point you go, hmm, do you think that's really true? And I go, absolutely. <laughs> See, room shot again. Okay, feel free to reuse those. Uh, a friend of mine, on, moving on to the next topic, a friend of mine recommended the Apple TV series on the New England Patriots dynasty, which has been going on for the last 20 years. Basically, it's come to a, an ignominious end, I suppose you would say, in the last year or so. It's been really fun for me. I mean, I how often, you know, the Patriots were always a joke for so long, and they have a couple of random years where they were good. But suddenly, starting in 2001, they became amazing, and we've had a 20-year run. I mean, okay. But I've been watching the, 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 the series, and it's tough to watch. I mean, the good parts are really good, but the Spygate thing was so annoying, and it was so stupid and so meaningless, and I just didn't like that part at all. The, the Super Bowl loss where we lost the perfect season to the Giants, I don't think I'm ever going to get over that. The Beating Atlanta, you know, coming from 28 to 3 down in the, in the late in the third quarter, that almost but not quite makes up for it. But losing the perfect season, yeah, that's just too much. The 
you know, I, I'm enjoying that the the terrible terrible uh, deflate gate thing, which was a non issue, a total joke. And people used it as such an excuse to try to destroy Tom Brady just because they didn't like him because he was too successful. And I'm like, you got to be kidding. And you know what? The bottom line is, I don't care whether they were inflating the balls or not, or deflating the balls or not. What difference does it make? He's going to go, both quarterbacks are using the same balls, you know, who cares? And not that it made any difference anyway to any of the games at all. They just wanted to call him a cheater. And I was so fed up. But the person I was fed up with the most is to this day, I, I can't look at Roger Goodell without having just complete withering contempt for the man. I'm just disgusted. I mean, he's such an entitled, you know, maybe I should just move on. I mean, I, I can't talk rationally about him, to be honest with you. And to suspend Tom for four games for nothing, for nothing, for not turning in his phone. That's what he suspended him for, just because he could. Like, oh, man. Uh, the series isn't over. Um, as a, the thing, it's I've seen the first eight episodes. I think there's two left. I'll have to wait for this Friday. They're coming out in the next couple of Fridays, and then that'll be all done. But I think I've come through all the hard stuff. Now it's going to be the breakup between Brady and Belichick. Boy, Brady, Belichick comes across as really heartless in this thing, which maybe he is. Okay. <laughs> At any rate, I'm really glad we had a long peak, but I cannot, I mean, if I'm perfectly honest, I have to admit, I don't mind the fact that they're not all that competitive right now. It's really lowering the stress level. It's great when your team is great, but there's so much stress of can they actually win it all because there's so much randomness and so much uncertainty in all these things. It's not as easy as it sounds. Okay, last random thought was the, the whole fact that we just switched over to Daylight Saving Time. I still can't say that. I still say Daylight Savings Time, even though I know there's no S on it. And we're in that weird interregnum where we have lost our hour, but the Europeans have not. Europe, most of the countries in Europe, I don't think, switch over until the end of the month. And therefore, if you need a convenient excuse for missing a meeting, you know, there's one right there. I also find it very weird that we're saving daylight during the summer when we're loaded with daylight. But what are you going to do? Yeah, okay, I get it. Let's move on to the tweets and toots. I started off the tweets and toots this week with how I had an obvious dad joke available and I missed it. During the the conference presentation on it, you know, the IntelliJ conference here, they, they put up a thank you for the speakers, and I couldn't resist replying by saying, I went through the entire conference, including my own presentation, and never once made a beware the IntelliJ Ides of March joke. IDEs of March. What a missed opportunity. But I suppose if you're not an AI-assisted Roman emperor, you're probably safe anyway. Maybe if you're just not Julius Caesar, you're okay. Oh, well. The next one I put in, I am your destiny, no density, right? If you're a fan of Back to the Future. Another conference, the conference where I'm going to be at the end of April, the Great International Developer Summit in Bangalore in India, posted this thing, dive into modern Java 21 plus, the next level upgrade at GIDS 2024 with me, master the latest Java features, and they put in a picture of freaking Venkat, super modded. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, that's destiny, you know, that we are just linked. So I had to respond with, that's not my picture. You know, I wanted to quote the Ting Tings going, that's not my name, you know. But at any rate, I know because Venkat has more hair than I do, and, and he sure does. So he replied, it may be a hallucination of how your charming self may look after the long flight, and long flight it is. We're talking 14 hours or whatever. I said, oh, please, I'll never have a mustache that glorious. I mean, take a look at his mustache, you know, that's Spen Cat in a nutshell. And he, he looked blushed and everything. So anyway, we had fun with it, but I couldn't believe we got linked again in all of that. Okay, this one was called Creepy, and that is an extremely young Tom Cruise. And it says, Interview with a Vampire, 1994. So yeah, young. Wow, that's that's... 30 years ago now, isn't it? That's not 20 years ago. That's 30 years ago. Wow. Uh, Tom Cruise is a soulless recluse who lurks in the darkness and sucks the light from all who come near him. He's also in this movie about a vampire. Showtime. Yes. 
<laughs> I honestly don't care that much about Tom Cruise. I mean, I enjoy the Mission Impossible movies. You know, they got fun for a while. Uh, I don't really care about him as an individual and certainly not the Scientology stuff. So whatever. But it was funny. This one I said, true that. And it says, technically, the missing sausages are still in the fridge. How did the cat get in there? Was the cat in there with the door closed? I can't believe it would like that. Is it sitting there meowing? All I do know is it's cold and it's pudgy. So it's a cold, plump kitty, I said. But yeah, if the sausages were in there before, they're still there. This one on leadership, this uh, Elle Gray, boy, has she been on a roll? She's had some great posts on Mastodon lately. I just picked one. It said, the boss has been pestering me to attend a leadership conference. So I completely jokingly said, a true leader would never sit in an audience being told what to do. And now half the audience office is in existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good luck with that. Anyway, she's had some really clever ones, and I was glad to see that one. Uh, this, I had to put in one political one. Somebody had a sign here. It says Lord Farquaad on the left and Donald Trump on the right. Both despotic, both owns large tower, both wants to drain the swamp. One was Shrek in it. Both disgusted by women, seemingly. And Lord Farquaad got eaten by a female dragon and Donald Trump will see. I think that's probably about as good a solution as any. My comment was, a dragon becomes friends with a donkey and the rest is history. Trump doesn't need to make friends with an ass. He's already the biggest one in every room he goes in. Yeah, he enters. Okay, rim shot, I suppose. <laughs> Give me a bottle of that good stuff. Can you see the ingredients on this? Isn't this amazing? I can't make it any bigger. At any rate, it says alcohol less than 1%. Each ounce contains cannabis. Uh, four and a half, whatever the measuring size is, chloroform <laughs> and morphia sulf or whatever. It's like, oh my goodness, skillfully combined with a number of other ingredients, which I can't even imagine. So yeah, I, I, I need to restock on that one, but there might be some side effects. Yes. This one says, uh, hard to keep these straight sometimes. It says, uh, this Lana tweeted here or posted, for the last time, the abyss is for staring into, the void is for screaming into, please stop screaming into the abyss. We are not insured for that. Rim shot, you know. Yes, you scream into the void, you stare into the abyss, and the abyss stares back, right? Oh, well. And finally, this wonderful little picture here of Hello Kitty of Borg. You will be assimilated. Yes. I found that on a Mastodon feed by 3 Day Monk on S-O-N-O-M-U dot club on Mastodon. Uh, don't even follow him. It was retweeted into my feed, and I thought, oh, that's great. So that was the newsletter. I did a very busy week last week. I have a busy week this week, mostly with a private class. The My Trinity class is on spring break. So, hey, I get a week off. And I, already this morning, I had my spring and three weeks course. So if I can work around my three-day class, oh, I guess what I should have mentioned, I'm giving a talk at the what they used to call the New England Java Users Group. And now it's a Boston area uh, meetup for for computer science, and I'm giving my talk on uh, AI and Java. So that'll be in Burlington, Mass. on Thursday evening. So look for the meetup group if you're interested. So that was a lot of fun, and I will see you next week. And cue that theme song, everybody. Take care. Hey, Good to see you. Time to tune in to Tales from the Jar. So let's begin. Java, come in and spring on my Groovy breath and don't be shy Tales from the jar side Oh yeah! Crack open the code, let's take a ride From design patterns to the latest trends Your weekly tech post that never ends